Hi all, it's the 14th of February 2023 and we're in a new stage in the current outbreak of Southern Hemisphere tropical cyclones. Cyclone Gabrielle continues to lash the North Island New Zealand as a subtropical storm, while two tropical cyclones, Freddy and Dingani, are spinning across the Southern Indian Ocean. At the time of recording, the core of Cyclone Gabrielle has rounded the northeast of the North Island. There are many reports of damage, including closed roads, flooding, and landslides. It's reported 225,000 people lost power. Extreme rainfall has occurred with the storm, with Wangaray having its wettest February day on record, while Napier had its second wettest February day on record, and Auckland had over 55% of its annual normal rainfall in 45 days. Over half a metre of rain fell in Rapa Rapa Riki Riki from 12am Sunday to 11am Tuesday. Thankfully, Gabrielle will finally be moving away from New Zealand over the coming 24 hours. But Cyclone Gabrielle was the, just the eastern end of a line of tropical systems that developed several days ago. The other systems in this tropical breakdown included a disturbance in the Gulf of Carpentaria and tropical cyclones Freddy and Dingani, now in the central southern Indian Ocean. The Gulf of Carpentaria disturbance is bringing rain into northern Queensland at the moment. Let's just take a quick look at the H wharf for this Gulf of Carpentaria system. It does look like the system is struggling to intensify, but it does become a tropical storm strength system with a closed circulation before moving over land. In the Gulf of Carpentaria, the storm doesn't really have a huge amount of water to play with. So now let's turn our attention to the Indian Ocean, where the two strongest storms are spinning away far from land. Dingani is the furthest west. The storm was impressive yesterday, but now is showing some signs of weakening. Still a Category 1 hurricane strength system, but trundling south-southeast into both higher wind shears and cooling sea surface temperatures. So this storm looks to be weakening and heading off away from land. So it's time to move on to Freddy, which is a different kettle of fish altogether. Freddy is currently estimated to have 85 knot one minute sustained winds that make it a category two hurricane strength system. On the Australian scale, it is however a category three severe tropical cyclone with 10 minute sustained winds of 140 kilometers an hour, which is 76 knots. It's gonna move out of the Australian region over the next 12 hours or so, and when it does so, it'll enter Reunion's region of responsibility. Now, if we go forward in the forecast, just take a look at this track. It's almost directly westward along 15 degrees south latitude, with no clear movement southward for five days at least. And by 19th of February, the cyclone is getting concerningly close to Reunion, Mauritius, and Madagascar. And going beyond the 19th of February, the GFS takes the storm directly across Mauritius, Reunion, and southeastern Madagascar from 21st to 23rd of February. This is a way, a long way out. And if we compare while here, we take a look at the ECMWF, this model takes it further north, striking Madagascar and then across the Mozambique channel into Mozambique. So two interesting different scenarios at these really long time scales. So let's finally check out the H wharf as we are expecting Freddy to intensify further to become a very impressive storm as it takes us directly westward track over the next few days. Here are the forecast surface winds in knots. The purple is above hurricane force. The hurricane wharf gets the storm up to 100 knots at least by 18th of February. So we'll likely see it become a major hurricane strength system and this fits with the JDWC forecast also. But either way, whether it does this or not, it remains hurricane force uh, throughout the forecast and likely will be well beyond the forecast still at hurricane strength intensity. So we're gonna have to cover Freddy for some time. As well as all that, it's going to be accumulating a huge amount of cyclone energy when integrated over its lifespan so we'll have to start looking at the record books to see if it could be getting close or not to the all-time record i've no idea what storm has the all-time record but we'll definitely have to check in on that and on that note i will end it for today if you like this video please give this video a like it really helps us out 
and subscribe and enable all notifications to get the latest updates and see you in the next one.